Now we've got a new airplane for the Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's really weird. As you can see, it looks like a normal 7878, the small variant of the 787 family, but the winglets are very much off. Yes, while the normal 7878 has actual blended winglets, this plane seems to have raked wingtips. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about a plane that Boeing planned to release but never did and some people call Call it Boeing's biggest mistake. Everybody, the Boeing 787 tree, which would have been another variant in the vast 787 lineup, obviously ranging from the 10 to the 9 to the 8, which is the smallest variant, adding this plane, the 787 tree, which is actually the same size as the 7878, so relatively small, but meant for short to medium haul flights. Yes, everybody, a domestic flying 787 with a range of only 5,000 kilometers. A range that is nearly as little as the Boeing 737-800. So that if you took off from the Japanese airport of Yao, you could not really reach much places outside of maybe China here, whereas the normal 787s can fly all over the world. Now, Boeing, when they announced the 787 lineup back in the early 2000s, they also announced this 787-3. And actually, some airlines loved it. Japan Airlines loved it. This livery is wrong, though. The Japan Airlines font is supposed to look like this. Very realistic model. And you may wonder now, why would any airline be at all interested in having sort of a worse version than the 7878, a version that can fly a lot less range? Well, the truth is the 787 in its size is quite brilliant for flying all over the world for routes that might not be super popular. I mean, it's a lot smaller than like the 777 or something, but like for specific routes, like flying from Edinburgh to New York, which is not gonna have the whole planet flown to fly on that route. It's brilliant because you can fill all those 300 seats. But also for short haul flying, the 7878 makes a lot of sense. It flies short haul flights all over the world. I mean, only recently we took a 787 flight, which was 30 minutes on Lufthansa. British Airways has a vast array of 787 flights that are extremely short. They fly from London to Paris on the 787, to Amsterdam on the 787, Frankfurt on the 787. Why? Because these are routes that have a lot of people want to fly on it. 290, 300 people. But also the 787 is quite brilliant for short turnaround times. After all, it is a wide body jet. It has two aisles, meaning boarding goes a lot faster than having an extremely long plane like the 757. Boeing knew that before they even, you know, released the 787. So they came up with a 787 tree indeed, a version of this plane specifically made for short haul flying. How does that translate? Obviously, the plane is very similar to the 787. Any 787 pilot would feel like home here. Cockpit is very much the same. Cabin is very much the same, although probably the business class would look different. This plane sure feels a little bit similar, but something that is very majorly different is the wings. They are a lot shorter. Wingspan is reduced. Why? While the 7878, which is pretty much the same aeroplane, is relatively small, it has a pretty high wingspan, and that is a problem for fitting to airports. Once again, we're here at a sort of a niche airport, and a real 787 probably wouldn't be able to fly here super easily, mainly because the wingspan overhangs taxiway restrictions or runway restrictions. This plane, though, with its shorter wingspan, could fit here very easily. It also could fit to airport gates that are smaller. It could now fit into class Delta gates. See, this is, for example, the Trondheim Airport in Norway, an airport that is typically small and only has small Delta class gates. According to the ICAO, there are planes that can fly here, like, as you can see, the 757, the 767, as well as all planes that are shorter, for example, the 737. But a plane that can fly here to this airport is the 787. It is in the same category as the 777s and the 747. Yes, to be truly used as a domestic flying airliner, you know, being able to fly to domestic airports, the 787-8 just has too long of a wingspan, which is why it now makes sense that the 787-3 was thought about. But of course, the biggest wing-related elephant in the room are the winglets, as I already said. Why would they make a plane with winglets like that nowadays? Well, it is because these raked winglets are actually more efficient for short-haul flights than the blended wing winglets, than the, that the 
the 787 has. Yes, blended wingtips really don't make sense under 200 nautical miles. So yes, definitely a modded 787 to make more sense and burn less fuel for a domestic market. The same thing applies for the engines. They're less powerful. The plane is built a little bit more structurally integral. Why? Because, you know, short haul flying gets a lot of stress to airplanes, you know, all those landings and takeoffs and having to pressurize the cabin and go down and up again. And once again, especially Japanese airlines love the idea of this plane. They have lots of routes that demand a lot of people in those planes for a short route. And we're, oh, we're crashing into cars. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, just leave, leave, leave now. Oh God. No, luckily it wasn't a Q400 this time. <coughs> but well, very quickly turned out that the 7873 was never going to happen. They already knew that in 2008, 17 years ago, business and brief, Boeing just suspends work on 7873, mainly because the 787 program back then had a series of delays in the final assembly line. Yeah, they had a bit of issues releasing the actual version of the 787, and so they decided to just scrap the 7873 program altogether, mainly also because this plane would have been a bit too niche anyway. How many airlines would seriously want to buy a plane that restricts their use, really, to only be able to fly a plane like this all year round on flights that are very, very short haul? Nevertheless, though, I feel like... Boeing really missed out on the opportunity here. Why? Because once again, it would have served a perfect replacement for the 757-767, a plane that they've been looking for to replace for a long time. Why? Because the 757 was just so brilliant. It had a lot of capacity for medium haul flights, so all the airlines could fill up the plane nicely. And nowadays, the 757 is aging very badly. Definitely does not have a cockpit that looks like this, which is why most airlines are now getting rid of the 757. And maybe rather by buying the A321 XLR or something like that. So everybody, the 787 tree never became reality because Boeing just gave up on the project because they had other stuff to do. And now I think it is way too late for them to reintroduce the 787 tree. This will probably never happen. This very interesting plane. It would be interesting to see a plane like this with winglets that looks like that nowadays. Let's go ahead and do a last landing, a final farewell to the never existing Boeing 787. 7-3. There you go. Oh, that was a bad landing. Doesn't matter. This plane is strong now to be able to actually hold that up. Anyway, about this add-on here, it's 11 euros and you can buy it on the marketplace now. Don't buy it. It is absolutely bad. It's by M Scenery. And what that means is it, it doesn't have reverse thrust animation, nor does it have spoiler animation, nor does this add-on... Look, the spoilers are out. They're not out here. Nor does this plane have any nose wheel steering. This plane is really, really badly built. It doesn't have any lights either. The landing lights are just black. But I kind of appreciate a little bit having a plane that never existed. A plane that is really interesting in the flight sim. So thank you very much for watching this short haul video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishitetsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New The York. You've got beautiful names.